everyone today I thought I would show you how I am going to approach this um, sunflower on this page here um, this is from um, the botanical affirmations covering book this is um, Dominica Stoker's book I've only got a few pages left fairly short book but uh, there's uh, it's, it's a nice book to uh, be coloring with the little um, sayings at the bottom as well um, <clears throat> the pictures are fairly similar in the sense that they've all got this frame round but you can choose which colour you can do it striped or plain which is quite fun and uh, you've always got some sort of sky with stars so you can make it into a magical background or you can make it into a nighttime or a daytime you know however you want but I'm just going to concentrate on the sunflower because it's quite an interesting shape we're looking at it in from the side so we've got this centre part sticking out and then the petals around I just thought it was a looked quite interesting so we're going to have a go at some of it not all of it but we're going to start with the center part and I'm using my Arteza expert pencils I want a nice soft pencil for this page it is nice to have um, a sharp point for some of these details but this pe this is um Amazon paper it's a little bit thin um, it's like it's like copy paper really and although I get on fine colouring on it I like to use a slightly s softer pencil um, most of the time for these little details I do tend to use a slightly harder one or I sit indents the paper a little bit which is okay but uh, it's a bit easier I find to use a softer pencil now for the um, seeds in the centre I'm going to start with the um, cinnamon which is a sort of mid-brown colour. I'm going to colour the whole thing in a light layer of this lighter colour. And this will just get me started. It will help me to see where, where I'm going and think about um, what I'm going to do with the, uh, with the whole area. It's a big area, as you can see, um, but it's quite quick to colour a light layer with this sort of soft pencil. And I haven't got it too sharp, which helps as well. Now I'm not going to be doing the butterfly today. Um, this um, butterfly I think looks like one of the ones now I'm trying to think of the name. Milkweed Monarch is that the name? Um, the orange one. So I'm going to just do it orange. So I've done orange butterflies for you before so I didn't want to do too much the same although I've made so many videos now, I'm going to be repeating things. I'm sure I've probably done some flowers before for you. Certainly yellow flowers anyway. So there's our basic brown. Okay, so we've just got an area in. Actually, let's zoom in a little because you don't need to be that far away. Do you? There, you're coming closer. Hello. Much closer to me now. Now I'm going to go in with a darker brown. Um, sorry, I've just got to wipe my nose. Oof. Oh, excuse me. And I'm going to use the cocoa brown. Um, it's very blunt. I'm just going to sharpen a little bit. I don't want it really, really sharp, but just, just something that I can actually use. Now I'm having a think about what I want to do with this. Do I want it darker on the edge or in the center? Um, I think I'm going to put um, some around the edge like this. I want to sort of define the edge, I think. Maybe we'll do it all at the bottom where it might be a bit more shadowy here and then lighten it up here but still wanting a layer around the edge as I said to define the edge a little bit. I'm just, uh, I'm just making it up as I go along like that. So until we get, you can see here, we've got a sort of definition where this is the sort of outside and this is the inside. And I'm thinking if we do all this outside first with this colour, maybe the inside would be a little bit darker. I think sunflower centres are usually quite dark. I mean, sunflower seeds are obviously black and white if you see them um, in their shells. So... Uh, Maybe we want it to be a bit dark. I don't really want to go black though. I quite like the idea of brown. So maybe we're sort of keeping this area a little bit lighter. I'm just going to layer that up a bit more. So I'm just building up those layers a little bit, going over the top of what I've done. I'm going to leave 
that there for now. I'm going to do the inside and I'll have a think about whether I'm happy with it. I'm going to use, I think this is the darkest brown, this is the dark chocolate brown. Okay, so I'm going to use that for this inside part and I'm thinking um, we're going to sort of ignore these bits and start here. I'm thinking again, maybe be darker down here because it's near the bottom. I'm hoping it will look a different colour to the other brown. I think it does. And I want to start to fade it as I go up, just in the same way as I did with the other bit. But we want to keep a sort of defined line here so that we can see the difference. See where the edge is, sort of thing. Now I'm starting to try to do a lighter hand on here. Hmm. Thinking that needs to go in just a bit to there. Darker down here. Now because this is quite light and thin paper though and it's very smooth there isn't lots of tooth to add lots of layers but I find that I can usually get enough for what I'm trying to do this edge is a bit messy I hope everyone's good today. It's a very miserable morning this morning. It's raining so hard. I was woken up at quarter to six with the rain battering on the window and uh, that was okay. I usually get awake about, in the summer I was wake up at half five anyway. In the winter I tend to sleep a little bit longer. I feel that this edge here looks a little bit odd. I'm just gonna extend it a little bit. That's better. Okay, maybe it might be a little bit more defined just around the top there. There we go. I'm going to do the yellow next. I may return to that bit. We'll see. The idea is I want it to look sort of thick and fluffy, and I think it's okay. But once we do the, the um, sort of yellow, we might get a better idea of what's going on. So yes, woken up quite early. I'm going to use this Tuscan Sun, I know it's orange, to start off with the um, petals. Now here we have a leaf and that is probably the bottom of the leaf. So I'm going to ignore that bit, hopefully, if I remember. Now this bit is definitely this petal here. And uh, I'm just going to do these sort of overlapping bits where it will be more shadowy so it will be a bit darker. It's very vibrant, isn't it? It's, it's quite orangey, but I'm not... I'm happy with that. Some sunflowers are um, some sunflowers are a bit more orangey. So I'm just doing all the overlapping bits. Whoops! I've gone over the line, which wasn't my intention. So yes, it's quite nasty out there weather-wise. I'm glad I'm in here recording for you rather than out there. Um, I'm very grateful a lot of the time that I don't have a regular job where I have to go out in horrible weather. She, my husband's working from home today as well. I suspect he's quite grateful because uh, although he drives, he has a little bit of a walk at the other end from the um, car park and uh, can get a bit wet. I realise I'm doing I'm doing a lighter layer on that centre bit. I need to do it for all of them, just a light bit. Just get them started. A bit where they overlap there, look. I have to adjust my hand around the tripod a little bit. So I got really excited recently. I'm getting ahead with my videos, as I think I've said. So um, it's still um, only the 4th of Feb today. But um, I've just recently surpassed 4,000 subscribers, which is really, really exciting. So thank you to everyone that has subscribed. It's, uh, it's just lovely. I know we, I don't get too obsessed with counting numbers. 
you know, on this sort of thing. It, I think it can get a little bit unhealthy if you uh, focus too much on it. But it just feels, you know, it's, I think it's nice to celebrate rather than get worried about it. I just realise you can't see the bottom of the sunflower. Sorry. I've been colouring bits and you haven't been seeing. So this is the sunflower yellow. It's a good name, isn't it? I think it's... Uh, I'm going to do all the leaves that are at the bottom completely in this. But um, anyway, yes, yeah, so I've been I've been happy about that. And I it was only um, maybe last week, week before, when I surpassed 3,000 um, Instagram followers as well. So uh, it is very exciting to uh, think that I'm sort of reaching that many people. I realise that some sub people that subscribe right at the beginning may not um, <laughs> be watching my videos. Obviously, not every subscriber watches every video. Um, I uh, I don't get you know huge views on most of them. Although one of my videos is really popular, I'm uh, going over those darker areas a little bit, just extending those up. But we're going to use a lighter yellow for these front petals mainly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, so. But one of yeah, one of my videos is doing re astoundingly well, should we say? And it's got I think twenty five thousand views. I mean, my kids go, oh, X, Y, and Z has a million views in five minutes, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> but uh, they haven't got such a niche market as me, and uh, I'm not, you know, that's okay. I'm not expecting that. Goodness. But uh, it just feels good to, uh, um, you know, know that I'm sort of reaching lots of people. And hopefully it means lots of people are benefiting from the relaxation of colouring, which is the important thing. Yeah, that's why I started. I didn't start out to... I did want to um, encourage lots of people to colour, you know. So, but it wasn't really about numbers specifically, if you understand what I mean. It was just about you know, trying to help people. And, uh, and I know, you know, just the existence of colouring books and people like Johanna Basford are really helpful to people anyway. Some of these I haven't gone all the way to the tip. And uh, I will finish them off with my other yellow, which will come in a bit. I just want to make sure that these back leaves look darker so there is some difference between them. And although this paper is quite smooth, it, um, the um, pencil can go down quite lightly if you want it to like that. So you just get a, a little amount of colour down, which is quite useful. Now this book, I've started on my listings, um, on my descriptions of my videos, I always put a link to the products that I use, the pencils and the book and things like that, but um, I think we've got all the way around. But I've just started um, fairly recently adding in the American links as well. This is the next brightest yellow, it's called Lemon Yellow, we're going to use it to finish off everything. Just checking it if it needs sharpening, but I think it'll be okay. So I usually link to Amazon, sometimes it's other sites. If I can't find it on both UK and US, there might only be with the one link. But I realise that a lot of you aren't in the UK, so just having a UK link isn't that useful. So uh, I've started putting the US links on as well. So it means if you want to find this book or these pencils or whatever it might be, anything I use in the video, I try to link to. And I also have a few general links um, to, to things that I use, like my sharpeners and rubbers and erasers and things like that. So, um, so you can sort of find things if you want to. Obviously, I know not everyone likes shopping on Amazon. I'm just doing that a bit in slightly lighter touch so that it looks a bit paler. But um, Amazon is um, easy 
and you can always look it up there and then buy it elsewhere you know you don't have to um, some of my links aren't for Amazon it depends on the item sometimes um, they're not available on Amazon or I have a link to in the, for the UK I sometimes have a link to Jackson's art um, they're my local one of my local art shops although they've got their big headquarters is in London which isn't local to me and um, they have a local branch and they only have two or three branches they're quite small so I link to them sometimes they have Holbein's um, open stock which is something that um, most people don't in the UK so that's good they're quite a useful one um, to um, know of and you can buy they do mail order of course you have to go into the shop going to the shop is always a dangerous thing because you can look and touch and see everything and um, anyway we we haven't gone there for a long time since pre-covid really um, so uh, I just order online and because um, I live close to the shop they have all the stock there so uh, it doesn't take long to come if I need things but I haven't been buying loads of stuff I uh, I uh, try to use things that I've got which is nice I've got a lot of things so I'm very lucky but there's always a temptation I know some people joke and say that um, they have two hobbies one is collecting pencils and books and the other is actually coloring um, it can be a bit like that but uh, I do try and use everything I have and I do find different things can be good for different um, uses as I said I explain to you why I picked these particular pencils for this paper and uh, sometimes it's that I want a particular color that I've only got in one particular set or that sort of thing you know so there are you know it can be useful having different sets but uh, if you can't afford to have loads then it's trying to find the best one for your price range really that can be a little bit tricky I would always say if you can try a few pencils that's good so if you've got a friend that colors that has pencils and you live near them that's always useful you go and try theirs out and I know it's tricky we can't wherever we are in the world different places we can't always go and see people at the moment um, if you're going for a really expensive set like Holbein's, Polychromos or Prismacolor you might be able to buy one or two first open stock now it's dearer to buy an open stock pencil um, I think for Holbein it's three pounds or something like that for a pencil in the UK and if you buy them as part of a set you might be able to pay less per pencil but it's a risk if you, you know, you don't want to buy 120 pencils or whatever it might be and then find you don't like them. It's better to spend that three pounds, try them out, see what you think before you start. So there's our um, flowers. And I think I'm really tempted to just have a little go at the butterfly. How long have we been going? Not massively long. Um, or I could do some leaves or I could do both. I think I'm going to do the butterfly. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to sort of ignore the markings. I'm just going to colour over them, I think. It'll be a bit easier. Hmm, no, maybe not. Um, so I'm going to go for the sort of brightest orange. We do have a blood orange, which is really red, but I'm not going to use that yet. I'm going to use them, just the orange. And um, if I think it needs a little bit more. Now this bit is the body. And this bit is the wing, so I think I'm just going to colour in some of these bits, like this. And then I'm doing them quite solidly. I want it to look quite dark at the top of the wing and then start to fade it a little bit as I go down. So here you can see I can gently fade each bit. So here, and then I'll fade it down. And the same with this bit. Now there are butterflies that look like this that are red, so you could do this in red if you feel that that would um, look better. Um, obviously you can do it in any colour, <laughs> you don't have to do it in the conventional colour, but uh, I like to do that with butterflies um, because I feel they look, if they look a little bit more like they would actually exist, I, it sits better in my head. Now these this rim around here and here, I'm going to leave these dots white, okay? 
I think they might be white. I'm trying to remember what the butterfly looks like. I'm rubbish at remembering things like that. But uh, these ones I'm going to do really lightly. And I'm going to come in with another colour. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use another bright orange. Oh, I've done this one, have I? But I'm going to use the Tuscan Sun, which we use for the sunflower, which is this orangey yellow. And it will keep that vibrancy without making it a deeper orange. And you'll see what I mean as I go over the top. I hope. Um, hang on, can I zoom in a little bit for you? There we go. So you can see this one that I've done. It looks more vibrant, but it's a nice, but it isn't really deep orange. So you can see the difference between that end and that end is what I wanted to achieve. So I'm going to go over all of the orange that I've done with this. to uh, make it look more vibrant and as I say I'm leaving this edge a bit white for now I'll check if I think it's worked in a minute and this is really simple colouring I'm just doing a really heavy layer and you can still see that dark orange through so you can see it looks significantly more orange than the sunflower even though we're using the same colour because we've got that orange underneath there we go. Yeah, I'm going to leave him like that. I'm just going to show you what colour, oops, let's go out, not in, what colour I'm going to use for the leaves and then um, I shall finish this. Now I'm going to do this bit here in my dark orange. Now the problem with this is that the ink smudges. So if you colour it like this, you get a black smear. So you have to be really careful when you colour it to try and colour around the letters bit tricky if you use a non-smudgy pencil it's much better so I might grab um, I might actually use my Arteza premium they're a bit less smudgy so that might work better but I'm definitely going to do that in orange so it really stands out we've got another sunflower here which will be the same color as this one um, and we do the leaves um, I think the leaves would look quite nice if they were quite dark um, uh, what have we got? We have, I think we've got forest green, which might work. So I will show you. I'm just going to sharpen a little bit. I'm not going to do the whole of the leaf the same colour. So this is the um, forest green that I'm going to start with. And I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to put a thick layer in here. This is where, because it's behind. And with this one, where it's overlapping, that's going to be the darkest area, and then I'm just going to fade it down through the leaf and we'll pop another colour on the top to just finish it off. But I quite like this really dark colour. I'm not sure if sunflower leaves are really this dark, but uh, I think it looks nice like that. And then the same for the other leaves. don't really need to show you all of them. I've just got carried away with colouring. So I will just do this one. Now the little tiny leaves that we can see here, I want to do a different colour so they um, stand out as looking a little bit different to these. So I'll probably do them in a pale colour. Um, I might use a, a slightly less soft pencil, but I'm not sure because there's quite a lot of them down here. It's going to wear the pencil down. I have to keep sharpening. So what I'll probably do is, as again, I might turn to my um, Arteza um, premium set because it's slightly harder, but they are the same colour families and, well, some of the same colours and everything, so that might work. I know it's going to all work together. So for the stem, I'm going to colour it like this. So the outside is darker. Carrie, don't forget to do the bit that's under here and around here got a leaf there that will colour like that and then I need to choose yeah we've got that leaf and that leaf and that leaf that I'm not going to do now so you can look at those um, when I'm finished um, and I need a colour to go over the top now a lot of the lighter um, there's a lime matcha absinthe spring green and mint green so they're all quite bluey and vibrant 
I think the matcha is probably the best. I'm just going to scribble it on a piece of paper to check. Yeah, I think that one's going to work the best because it isn't so bluey, as you can see from here. Look, the colour. No, you can't see. Let's zoom you in a bit. I can do. Oh, I can tilt the book so you can see. Look, you can see here it's a so it's quite a nice colour in that it's not it works very well with the forest green. So basically I'm gonna go over all of the edge and then just sort of blend it into that dark colour. I don't want to go all the way to the edge, I want that dark colour to show as a shadow. Okay, and the same with this one. So I'm nearly done with you now. I'm thinking I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to do with the sky. Now we have this, uh, we have the stars in the sky. What I'm going to do is I'm going to colour the sky in blue. Um, I haven't quite, I haven't got my blue tray out actually on my Artezas. I use the Artezas. Um, I'll probably use just a mid blue. Um, I don't know if there's a sky blue. I can't remember. I quite fancy doing a more turquoise blue. I think it might match. But uh, we'll see. Let me have a look. Hmm. See, I quite fancy this. Actually, this robin egg blue. I think it'll work. I'm going to use that for the sky. I'm going to zoom out. Show you a little bit. There we go. So, I'll just put a bit here. So, I'm going to colour across that way. I find that works better for skies because it, um, if you get a few lines, it looks more natural. If you colour up and down, it looks like it's raining. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to colour over the top of these stars and then I'm going to draw them back in with a bright yellow Posca pen, um, this one, because um, then it, they'll match this. So the stars will match the sunflower and the, um, the writing will match the butterfly. Okay, and the colour for the, um, the um, little flowers, I'd quite like to use that, but I don't think I've got that in here. Remember out. I'm just going to tip out my Artezas and find the colour that I want. Um, probably the lime green. Okay. I don't have that in my expert. My Artezas are a bit weird. But if I did the Artezas, the uh, premiums vary. There are, depending on which pot you've got, there are different colours. If you've got the pear green, I would use that. That would be really nice, but I don't have it. So that's me. I'm just checking. I'm just going to show you the, um, the stem, how that looks once we've got this green on. So I'm going up to the edge of that darker green, but I'm not going over it unless I think it really needs a good blend. I think it'll be okay. So you can see how it looks with that dark and light mix of colour. Okay, I am going to finish this and I will put it up. Um, oh, the frame. i to do the frame. Um, I might do that in orange as well. I think if we do this in orange and this in orange, it might all work together. I haven't chosen the shade of orange for the, um, it'll probably just be this one. This is a vermilion, or it might be the pumpkin. I've got a vermilion and a pumpkin. Probably not the vermilion, it's a bit red. Um, or it might just be the orange. I'll probably just use the orange. That's called orange. Okay, so I'll probably use that for this. And the frame and the frame oh, the frame will just be plain plain coloring okay so that's how I'm going to finish it I've got a little orange blob there which I'm not very happy with I'm going to try and erase that and anyway and I shall finish so there is where I'm at I think I've gone through everything with you we've got a little down here these leaves are quite complicated but just work out what's going on with what um, these it would all be, um, I'm trying to work out if they'd be petals or leaves. I think they'll be leaves. I think they'll be, I'm going to do this in all in green. And I will just use the dark green where it overlaps and the light green towards the ends of each bit. 
so uh, I think it'll be okay. So you can finish that if you've got this book, otherwise um, just hang about to the end anyway and you can see um, you can see how I finish it off. So thank you so much for watching, um, I hope that was okay. Um, gosh, I've talked for a long time, I just realised how long I've been going on for, but uh, thank you so much and happy colouring!